If you are craving some comfort food recipes but still want to be healthy, then watch this video because I'm sharing three delicious healthy comfort food recipes that are not only delicious, but they're satisfying, they're yummy to eat, and you are going to love them. If you're new, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. We make lots of delicious healthy recipes here and let's go ahead and get into it. So the first thing we're making are these chocolate chip blondies because let's face it, what is more comforting than a nice decadent blondie? So I'm starting off with some almond butter, but you can definitely substitute this for any kind of nut or seed butter that you have on hand or you want to use. To that, I'm going to be adding in a couple of eggs. Now, I haven't tried this with a flax egg, so if you try this with flax eggs and it works, let me know down in the comments below so that I can see and other people can see too. So try to whisk that together a bit. Depending on how thick or how runny your nut butter is, that will depend on how much it's gonna take for you to whisk them together. But I find that the egg really helps to kind of break up the nut butter and get it nice and smooth because we don't want chunks of it. Then to that, I'm going to be adding in some melted coconut oil, and this is gonna further help the blondie to really mix together nice and thoroughly so that our wet ingredients turn out nice and smooth. And all the measurements for everything will be left in the description box below, along with my free healthy dessert ebook that if you haven't gotten yet, I would definitely suggest downloading that. It's free and it has my top healthy desserts, great ones similar to this blondie one and ones I've made time and time again. So to that, I'm adding coconut sugar, which is great because it's lower on the glycemic index and it's also less refined. So anything time that we can choose foods that are closer to its natural state, the better a little bit of vanilla for flavor, and then I am folding that in until it is nice and smooth. So next up, it is time for the dry ingredients. So to that, I'm adding in some almond flour, as well as a tiny bit of coconut flour, and I find that this blend really helps the texture turn out perfect. A pinch of Himalayan salt, as well as some baking soda, which is just gonna help them kind of rise and develop. So then just slowly fold together the dry ingredients into the wet ingredients until everything is nice and combined. Once your dough looks like this, go ahead and add in some dairy-free chocolate chips and fold those in until they are nice and incorporated. And if you really like nuts in your blondies or brownies, you can definitely add in some walnuts here or pecans if you so choose, but I'm definitely one of those people who prefer my brownies and blondies nut, like chunky nut-free. So go ahead and press your dough pan into an eight by eight sheet. And I find it a lot easier to line it with parchment paper because once it bakes off, you can just pull it out and cut it up. So after baking for about 20 minutes at 350 degrees, I bring it out of the oven. I like to sprinkle a little bit of sea salt on top of my like chocolate desserts because I find it enhances the flavor and I really like the combo of salty and sweet, but that's totally optional. I allow them to cool for about 15 minutes before pulling them out. And then I'm slicing mine into nine giant bars, but you can definitely slice this into smaller bites if you want to make them for an event or you just want to make like more of a smaller bite. So you can make nine large ones, you can make 16, 18, whatever you like. But I like when I have like a good size blondie if I'm having a blondie. Anyways, they turned out so delicious. This is definitely a really good classic recipe that you can keep coming back to and everyone is going to love it. Next up, we are making jicama fries. So if you don't know what jicama is, you can find it usually in your grocery store. I bought mine pre-cut up because it is quite a hard vegetable. You'd have to peel it and then cut it up. So just to make it easier, I bought mine pre-cut. Then I'm going to be pouring some boiling water over it and letting that sit for 10 minutes. And this really helps to kind of pre-cook them because we want them to get nice and crispy. After you've let them sit for about 10 minutes, I'm adding in some avocado oil, some Himalayan salt, some paprika, as well as some garlic powder. And you can definitely change up the seasonings to what you like. I just find that this blend of seasoning works really well. And then I toss them in it. So if you're unfamiliar with jicama, 
it's a really great vegetable because it's lower in carbohydrates. So if you're doing a lower carb diet or you're going keto, this can be a really good kind of fry option for you because they taste delicious, but they're lower in carbs than your normal potato. So I just line a baking sheet again with some parchment paper. You want to make sure it's greased so that it doesn't stick and then lay them out singly. Make sure they're not on top of each other or too close together because that will prevent them from getting nice and crisp. And after about 25 minutes in the oven, you have these wonderfully golden crispy fries that taste so good and are good for you. And then we are making paleo grilled cheese. So I'm gonna be using sweet potato toast for this, but you can definitely use your favorite paleo bread. I find sweet potato toast is a great option for those of you who can't find paleo bread near you. If you want a recommendation for a paleo bread, I really love Unbun. Um, they make delicious breads, but if you can't find one, honestly, sweet potato toast is so versatile. So I make my sweet potato toast and I have that on hand in either the fridge or the freezer to use as you would bread. So this time I'm just taking some dairy-free cheese and some nitrate-free bacon in the middle of the cheese and kind of layering that on top like you would a normal grilled cheese. And I find that the flavor combo is honestly so delicious and you get that comforting vibe of like the melted cheese still with your sweet potato toast. So then you would cook it like you would normally cook your grilled cheese for a few minutes until it is golden on one side and then flip it over and cook it until it is golden on the other one. And honestly, this turned out so good. It is so satisfying and delicious. You are definitely gonna love this recipe. So now you have some healthy comfort food recipes that are delicious, easy to make, and are oh so satisfying. If you haven't had a chance yet to download my free healthy dessert ebook, make sure you do that. I'm gonna leave a link down in the description box. It has all my top desserts that I have been making for years and years, and they're so good, so you can have that right at your fingertips. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and share it with your friends so that you can both have some delicious comfort food recipes. I'm also going to leave my healthy recipes playlist right here that has tons more delicious, easy, healthy recipes that you can make. I hope you guys are all having a, a fabulous day and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.